My name is Louise Lavictoire. I am a PhD student. Andy Ramsey is my supervisor and I'm working with uh, the freshwater pearl mussel to better understand captive breeding of the species so that we could reintroduce them into the wild and hopefully save them from extinction. These mussels are one of only a handful of freshwater mussels that we have in the UK. They're critically endangered because of things that humans have done, so uh, declining river habitat uh, because of practices like forestry and intensification of land use, farming and that kind of thing, and as well as trying to sort of improve general water quality for other species, um, improving it for the pearl mussel will be of benefit to humans as well because they provide a, an environmental service in that they, they filter our water. So the adult mussels can filter up to 50 litres a day and help remove things like algae and, and small particles and things like that. So if we can get the conditions right for them, it will help other species as well as sort of helping us to, to keep our waters clean. They're sort of fairly important for river clarity and that kind of thing. I'm working with the scanning electron microscope here at Derby University to try and see if there are any differences in biology of uh, juvenile mussels at different ages. So working with mussels which are only a few weeks old and working up to about three, three and a half years old to see what happens when they switch between modes of feeding. So they start out as pedal feeders where they use their foot and ciliary action to pump water into their shells um, and then when they're roughly about 18 months old they go through a, a transformation stage where they switch from pedal feeding to filter feeding so they then start to use their gills as the primary pump of water into the valves and so I'm looking at the differences that the gills undergo between the pedal feeding and the filter feeding stage to try and understand if it's a, if it's a source of mortality for juvenile mussels and just to try and understand what happens to the gills during that period. Their gills are, I guess the best way to describe it is they're kind of triangular and semi-hollow. So the female mussels brood the glycidia within the gills and then as the temperature starts to rise, the females, because they use their gills to breathe as well as to brood and to feed, they start to sort of go into stress because they can't breathe with all of these glycidia inside them. So they release them as a stress response and it just so happens to coincide with the perfect time that the fish are around to insist the glycidia. So it's all very synchronous and timed well. Even the really young mussels have cilia that on their gills, which I wasn't expecting. I guess they can act as like a rudimentary filter because the, the cilia kind of help sort particles that they feed on. So they feed on algae and bacteria. So that's one thing. So even the youngest mussels have fairly complex cilia. The older mussels have quite organized gills and definitely by three years old they've got sort of a fully functional sorting mechanism. The Freshwater Biological Association, which, who, who I work for as well as doing this part-time PhD, um, we've got a captive breeding programme for the species with a view to releasing them when they get to a stage where they're a bit more robust and able to handle life in the wild trying to get them to about 10 years old that they are able to sort of handle less than ideal conditions. So we've got some eight-year-olds at the minute and we're planning to try and reintroduce them in 2017-18 time. And we're still breeding from, from six different populations trying to, to breed new juveniles every year. So they're a really fascinating species in terms of reproductions. Not only do they use their gills for, for feeding, but they also use them for breathing like we would use our lungs for breathing, but they also use them for brooding. The, the life cycle is pretty complex. The, you've got male and female mussels. The male mussels release sperm into the water, which the females then inhale. And then they brood, they, they use the sperm to fertilize their eggs, and then they brood the eggs for about six weeks or so. And then they release the larvae into the water column. So every female mussel, it's estimated, can release anything from four to 16 million larvae in one go, in one season. The larvae go into the water column, which then it has to find a salmon or a trout to, to complete its life cycle. So as the salmon and trout are swimming around, the larvae, which are called glycidia, have to snap onto their gills. So as the fish takes in water to pass over its gills to breathe, the glycidia recognises that it's in a fish and starts to snap. And it snaps onto the gills of the fish as a sort of a defence mechanism. The fish 
creates this cyst around the glochidia. And then the glochidia stay on the fish for about nine months, 10 months, depending on temperature. And then once the, the temperature starts to rise again in the following spring, the juvenile mussels drop off of the fish into the gravel and then start to grow as, as juveniles here. So the captive breeding program needs adult mussels, fish, and then we collect the juvenile mussels as well. So it's really convoluted and complex. The work couldn't be done without the, the SEM, the scanning electron microscope. So it's, it's a great resource and feeds really well into the project that I'm doing, which looks at both the behavior side of things of the juvenile mussels as well as the biology. So it mixes the two quite nicely.